Hi everybody, my name is Caleb Bader and this is Journey of the Unshackled Mind on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Thanks for watching. No, really, thank you for watching. This is the beginning. You know, I'm, I'm at a kind of a rough start here. I'm still figuring out everything that I'm going to do with the show. Um, so thank you for bearing with me and coming to check out what I'm doing here. I do have an outline of the next couple shows that I want to give you today and uh, just show you what I got coming up in the future. It's going to be more than just me in front of a camera talking to you. Um, and there's going to be two things, well, a few things that are going to be kind of reoccurring themes with this show. And essentially that's just because these things are what I'm all about and how voluntarism relates to my life. Um, the first of those things is that I am a Christian. Um, and what I mean by this, because I, I feel like I need to clarify. It's I shouldn't need to clarify, but there is a lot of confusion surrounding what it means to be a Christian. Uh, so what I mean by that is basically you break down the word Christian. Um, the suffix I-A-N just means to, means of, from, pertaining to, uh, so I am of Christ. And I'll get more into that as we go on in future shows. But this is really the driving force behind why I'm a voluntarist. Um, because there is no branch of statism that is according to the Word of God and in alignment with the Word of God. The only thing that I know of that is in harmony with the Scripture the only way to organize society that I know of is in a voluntary way. I do believe that my God is opposed to statism, is opposed to violent aggression and theft. And I firmly believe that I can show you this from the scripture, from his written word that he has given to mankind. And I'll do that periodically throughout the show. Um, it's something I'm very serious about. I do study the scriptures very frequently. I've been steadily growing in my relationship with God over the past couple of years especially. And... I feel like, you know, that's one area I do have a lot to offer. It's something that I've put a lot of energy and time into learning and growing in. Um, so for this network, that's some insight that I can offer. There's a lot of, a lot of confusion. A lot of confusion out there where the Word of God has been manipulated, either intentionally or unintentionally. And people will use it wrongly to hurt other people or twist it around to make God's word fit with whatever they think it should mean. Um, but I'm a firm believer that the scriptures... are God's word. God spoke to men and gave his wisdom to men so that they could write it down and we could have it to learn and grow in our understanding of who God is and what he's done for us, especially what he's done for us in Christ. So, 
That's one major theme you will see coming up throughout the show. Um, I don't want to scare anyone away that's not a Christian. Um, this show is not going to be about me, you know, preaching at you all the time. Um, this is what I am. I'm not... I'm not trying to push anything on anyone. But I do want to stand for the truth. And I do want to clear up any misconceptions, if at all possible. And present both my views as a voluntarist and my views as a Christian with accuracy and integrity. And I do believe that the scriptures speak for themselves, that they are not for any private interpretation. And that we can study them and learn. That we can see what God wanted us to see instead of what men wanted us to see. The other major theme that you'll probably see coming up a lot in this show, or you will see a lot coming up in this show, is going to be sustainable living. Um, then this is a very broad topic that I'll be going through. I, lots of different subjects relating to this topic of sustainable living. But over the past couple of years, I've done a lot of thinking uh, since kind of waking up out of my status quo status mindset and put on the ideas of voluntarism, really got into my Bible and started studying God's Word changed my thinking in those ways and then realized that now the next step is to get away from the state, to distance my state, excuse me, to distance myself from the state as much as possible. Um, and I do believe in doing that in a peaceful, nonviolent manner. And I'm not ever advocating for any kind of violent revolution against the state. I want to free myself in my own life as much as possible while remaining peaceful and distance myself from the state. One great way I believe I can go about this is to educate myself on agriculture, farming techniques, gardening techniques, learn how to grow my own food and raise my own food, learn how to provide for my family without relying on any outside systems. Now I love the market. The market is a beautiful thing and it has its purpose. It helps people in a big way, but there is no free market. At this time, or ever in my lifetime, there has never been a free market. The things you buy at the store are taxed. The gasoline you pump into your vehicle is taxed. Everything is taxed. The government has its fingers everywhere. Sustainable living is a great way to get away from this. And we'll talk about lots of things throughout the show. We'll talk about sustainable housing including Earthship, 
architecture, which is a very big interest of mine at the moment. Um, we'll look at lots of gardening techniques, horticulture, permaculture. Next, the week after next week, I will have a guest. I'll interview a gardener, and we'll talk about permaculture techniques. So that'll be very informative. It'll be good to uh, get you some knowledge about how you can go about distancing yourself from the state um, in that way, just simply growing your own food. You know, this also goes into the welfare state. Because my, my brother and I, we talk about this all the time. You look around and you see all these vacant lots in these cities that we live in. You see all these just city partitions and medians just filled with grass, not doing anything, not producing anything. But really, an active movement of people wanting to grow their own food and wanting to help other people could get together and they could utilize all this empty space and grow enough food to feed all the hungry people in their area. That's another big thing that hopefully we'll be talking a lot about throughout this show is community gardens. Now that's a great a great way for a, people in a neighborhood, a society to get together, organize, and help each other out in a voluntary way. And really there's just so much more love and sincerity in it that way. It's not I, I'm going to vote this politician into office so that they can support laws and write legislation that will send police officers and IRS agents to force people to give up money, steal from people violently, so that we can give that money to someone else who's in need, making them reliant on us the state. There's so much that we can do to move outside the constraints of the state. And it really all starts with putting it on in our own lives. All right. So next week we'll be looking at a couple things. I actually wrote them down. That'll be very pertinent to current events. I keep seeing things come up. Um, questions like these come up on the internet, various places. That I think we can take a look at, take a look at the scriptures, and provide some good, sound knowledge and understanding of these issues. I wrote down a few questions that I've heard. The first question is, didn't God impose a state upon the children of Israel when he gave the law of Moses? The second question is, is there a biblical case for Zionism? And the third question, doesn't God having a chosen people make him like a racist? The answer to all three of these questions is a resounding no. But, like I said, we'll get into that next week. I'll crack open the Bible and we'll just delve right into it. I don't want to scare anybody off. It's an unbeliever, like I said. I believe that this can be helpful to all of us, to any voluntarist, um, even if you're very strongly anti-Christian, 
I believe that you can get something from this. You can at least get a better understanding of what it is that you're against. Because um, really I see that a lot with, with people that are not Christian believers that are very opposed to, to Christianity and to the Bible. But they've never read the Bible. They don't have a firm understanding of what it means to be a Christian. And it, it really reminds me of, you know, when you're as a, as a voluntarist, when you're trying to talk to someone about voluntarism, and they just shut it down immediately, you know, without, without knowing anything about it, without taking some time to educate themselves. Um, and they just shut it down. And, and come up with, well, well, what about this? What about the, the what are we going to do about the roads? What are we going to do about the health care? What are we going to do about defense? You know, without taking the time to seriously consider what you're saying as a voluntarist, that, hey, there might be a better way. And I, you know, that, that's a big frustration for many voluntarists. And, you know, I see that the same way when I'm trying to talk to people about the gospel of Christ. But at the very least, as a non-believer, what you can get from watching this show is you can show believers from the scripture, from their scripture, why the state is wrong. So if nothing else, it'll help you there. So next week, I'll be going over those questions. The week after that, I will we'll be learning about different types of permaculture, which is a sustainable agriculture that's modeled after natural ecosystems. Um, so this is very interesting stuff stuff that I'm in the beginning stages of learning about myself. Um, but I will be having an interview with somebody that knows quite a bit more than I do about the subject. And like I said, it'll be very interesting. So now that I've spent the first half of the show talking about future shows, there is one thought that I'd like to plan your mind before you go. It's something that I've been thinking about a lot lately and it's that voluntarism is simple isn't it it's really clear concise easy to grasp now you could spend years studying libertarian philosophy anarchist theory Austrian economics and just keep learning and learning on the ideas of liberty and theories of how we can have a voluntary society. You could continue to grow in the knowledge of liberty. But at its core, it's simple, it's easy to understand. Love, peace, freedom. These are things that essentially all people seek. If you go up to practically anyone and you directly ask them, you know, do you believe it's okay to use aggression on another human being? Do you believe that it's okay to initiate force on another human being? Is it okay for me to go next door to my neighbor's house and shoot their dog and steal their money so that I can help my other neighbor down the street or so that I can do any other number of things that I want to do with that money. If you were to ask essentially anyone, they would respond that no, that is not okay. It's not okay to own people. 
Go ask, ask people that you know if it's okay to own other human beings. They will tell you no. Because these concepts of liberty, these ideals that comprise the philosophy of voluntarism, they're simple. And most people know they're right. So something I've been experimenting with lately is not approaching a conversation calling myself a voluntarist or calling myself an anarchist or a libertarian but approaching a conversation as a human being not putting any labels on myself but approaching the conversation as a human being talking to another human being trying to communicate ideas and the ideas that I will communicate will be of peace and love and freedom and the person that I'm communicating with will most likely agree with what I'm saying because they haven't been put on the defensive that, that can come later but once I get them to admit that everything that the state does is immoral when they come back later with all the excuses of why we need a state then we can say well we have to remember that the state is immoral and as peaceful people we have to try to seek more peaceful solutions and if that person is honest then they'll agree that we have to seek out more peaceful solutions even if they don't admit it right there in the discussion with you it's something they'll go home and they'll think about they'll keep them up at night because you got through to them that much but what shuts people down is when we approach them as I'm this, you're that. I disagree, you're wrong. I'm a this, you're a that. And that's what they're used to already from the statist two-party system. I'm a Republican, they're a Democrat. You know? And that's, obviously we as voluntarists know that that's a trick that's been built up to perpetuate this atrocity known as the state. It's something to keep people distracted. Because people have this strange tendency to slip into that us versus them mindset. Disliking people that you've never even met because they're from certain geographical location or they speak a certain language or they call themselves by a certain label people have been conditioned to shut other people out that are different than they are that may have some different viewpoints to offer but no matter how much we as humans try to segregate ourselves, we can't segregate ourselves out of humanity. We are all just human beings. So if you can relate to somebody on the level of a human being and the fact that as a human being, you like peace and freedom. You like to be loved. 
You like to be treated right. You don't like to be stolen from. You don't like to be beaten. You don't like to be kidnapped. These are things that are virtually true for all of humanity. And then later, you know, once the conversation is established that we are both against aggressive violence, then now we can talk about anarchist theory. Now we can talk about how a voluntary society would work. And that person's going to be more open to receiving my ideas and having actual communication take place instead of just waiting for their turn to talk and spout off whatever they got from whatever talking head that they like to listen to on whatever news station they like to listen to. Now, it's something, if I'm explaining to people that I'm a voluntarist, that I'm an anarchist, I'll explain what that means before I just tell them I'm an anarchist. You know, anarchist, that's kind of like telling people you're a Christian. There's a lot of confusion related to what it means to be an anarchist. You know, so why start with that? Why let somebody know that? You know, and people ask me about my tattoo all the time. They'll ask me what that means, and I'll explain to them, you know, it's a symbol of peace and freedom. I'll show them the V stands for a voluntary society. Maybe later I'll show them the A stands for an anarchist society. Once I've established myself in the conversation enough to not scare them away with labels and us versus them mentality. But anyway, I think I'm about out of time right now. I'll see you next week. We'll discuss those things I talked about. Thank you very much for tuning in to Journey of the Unshackled Mind on the Voluntary Virtues Network.